administration is cutting off aid to rebels in northern Syria amid concerns that it can fall into the hands of al-Qaeda-tied militants. The White House confirmed Wednesday that the U.S. has suspended delivery of what's being called non-lethal assistance to rebels in the north. Britain reportedly has followed suit. Ivan Elin is a senior fellow and director of the Center on Peace and Liberty at the Independent Institute. He joins us. Ivan, please uh, tell us exactly what this non-lethal uh, assistance is. Well, it's usually it's anything that doesn't shoot, uh, but but it certainly can have a combat multiplication effect, enhancing the for the the uh, abilities of the forces that are using them. It's stuff like vehicles, uh, communications devices, computers, even food. Now, what kind of position does this put the U.S. government and its foreign policy in? They've called for the removal of Bashar al-Assad, and they've encouraged rebels to take up arms against this government. But now it seems that the rebel factions seem to be, if not 50 uh, percent, somewhere close to that in, in terms of Islamists who would actually be against the United States and actually maybe against their policies and things that they do. So they seems like they find themselves in a quagmire here. Is that true now? Yes, it's, it's, they are in a quagmire, and they probably regret maybe even uh, having advocated the overthrow or demanded the overthrow of the Assad regime because uh, it's even worse than 50 percent because most of the al-Qaeda and Islamist groups are more effective fighters than the, than the U.S.'s uh, uh, fighters, you know, the more moderate elements, if you can call them that. And so uh, the U.S. is faced with the, with the very prospect that perhaps the people that sub uh, you know, the rebels are going to be worse than the Assad government uh, if they ever took over. Because in warfare, usually uh, the most ruthless uh, group rises to the top. If you look at the Bolshevik Revolution uh, in 1917 in Russia, that's the case, but many other revolutions as well. And, of course, our, our people are not the most ruthless. And, in fact, the suspension of aid uh, by the United States happened because an Islamic group, took over some warehouses and the headquarters of uh, the, the more moderate group uh, and took all the equipment, that uh, much of it uh, by, given by the U.S. Now, there comes the issue, which is an X factor here, of the issue of chemical weapons. I mean, this was something that brought the Assad regime on the brink of, of being fired upon by the West, and now he decides to turn them over, and it seems like it's actually given him some legitimacy. Has that played out in any way in terms of the fighting on the ground? Has that helped the, the regime as well? Well, I don't think the chemical weapons really matter that much on the battlefield. They're much, you know, they're certainly nasty weapons, but in warfare, they usually only about, uh, account for about 1% of the casualties, and that was even true during World War I, where they were used on a large scale. Uh, conventional bombs and bullets usually cause many more casualties, but of course, these weapons have gotten a mystique about them, and an, an evil mystique. And of course, uh, that's why Assad turned them over, because he... He didn't want to get bombed by the U.S. He didn't want to drag the U.S. into it. Uh, and I think Obama was relieved uh, that he did so because Obama foolishly had uh, made a red line that if he used this uh, on, a, on a fairly substantial scale, he was going to have, he said the United States would take action. And so uh, uh, I think Assad was very shrewd to do that, to turn them over, because they don't really matter on the battlefield mm -hmm. that much. Ivan, one last question with about 30 seconds that we've got here. What happens now? What would you advise if it was you at the table? Well, I've always advised that we have no dog in this fight, really. You have to look at the bigger picture. Syria is not uh, in the U.S. vital interests. And also, we don't, the Cold War is over. Uh, we're the unquestioned top dog in the world. We don't have to be in every conflict mm -hmm. just because Iran and Russia are supporting the other side. Uh, you know, we should have we should be leery because in in the 80s we supported Islamic radical Islamic fighters uh, in mm -hmm. Afghanistan and they turned into Al Qaeda. Now we're not doing that in this case, but as I mentioned, in war uh, weapons and and this is a stark example of this weapons that we give to one uh, group may end up in the hands of a more ruthless group, which is what happened what has happened in this case. Ivan, so, thank you very much. I'm going to you don't know whether Ivan, I'm gonna have to step in right here. I'm so sorry, but uh, thank you for that. Ivan, even, Ivan Eland of the Independence Institute. Well, time now to take a look at some of the other stories making headlines around the world. In the Arise News World Wrap.